Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we are playing a little bit of a fun machine, which is the Kalinin K7. And as you can see, it's not going too well so far. Um, but this is a uh, user mission, which was uh, designed by Beckis, uh, who has made a bunch of other user missions uh, in his time, including stuff such as the... Oh god, I think we're gonna die here. I'm not sure that the elevators were- Oh my god! Alright, well, this was a wonderful start. <laughs> I think we might be for the drink. But yeah, basically, um, when it comes to it, um, Beckis is an individual who's made a ton of user missions uh, over time. You know, he made the TOG. Uh, if you remember that, I uh, made stuff like the KV-2222 and also stuff like the KV-6 and it seems to uh, have, you know, some missions which are based around uh, fantasy and some missions which are based around historical stuff. This one is obviously one of those which is based around fantasy uh, being a completely ridiculous machine in the form of the K7 but sometimes you need a bit of fun in your life and that's why we're pretty much having a look at this today. It also brings up interesting conversations when it comes to War Thunder. A lot of players have talked about the idea of adding in weird and wonderful vehicles uh, that obviously in real life uh, didn't exist. And the question is if people would be okay with uh, fakery machines and stuff like that. And obviously this thing has uh, some quite meaty uh, armament on it. The main armament, uh, at least the defensive armament, being these guns, which have access to airburst shells, <laughs> because why not? And the 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 question is um, always um, probably the, there's a few other better examples than this, um, but the few examples such as stuff like the mongoose, uh, which was created, which was kind of a uh, project or an idea for quite a fast uh, vehicle to be able to be moved in and uh, would that be something that would be acceptable uh, compared to maybe something like this which obviously is a little bit uh, kind of all over the place for me personally um, I don't really like the idea of vehicles which never existed uh, the main issue with them is because of the fact that they don't have a lot of tested well no testing data on them and also no concrete designs on them it ends up in a situation where uh, where the the vehicle can be molded to the game instead of the game being molded to the vehicle and it means that balancing may be easier but the actual realism element is pretty much gone which is very sad uh, some one of the things that was actually brought up uh, a while ago when it came to these uh, ideas which uh, I do want to address in a video was the idea of naval stuff um, so naval things um, actually do go through a pretty decent design process uh, when it comes to actually building the things you know you have to go through a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different ideas to be able to get to such a large and uh, decent uh, blueprint design before building it. But the issue is with this, this also happens with tanks, uh, this also happens with aircraft, they go through several different designs, and if they don't, or aren't able to get it to work, or at least to get it to feasibly work to that level that they want to make it, then therefore the design doesn't go forward. Uh, so this is no different to uh, ground or aviation stuff. Another thing is the claim that, you know, they have to do all of these calculations, they have to work out all of these things, um, and therefore that is why uh, we should put in stuff like naval projects, uh, because they go through so many different design stages. Uh, the only way that this would work and be uh, a fair assessment is if uh, one thing didn't exist, and that was ships which were fully built through this design process that also were busted and meaning that they they didn't uh, function properly and if all you need to do is find one example uh, of this where they didn't function properly and if you want an example uh, the example is the HMS London which we already have in game 
the HMS London, uh, when it was built, um, was not really fit for purpose. It had quite a lot of issues uh, when it came to its general uh, use. It had problems constantly uh, when it came to its build, cracking certain areas and had to be rebuilt technically about three times, uh, showing that the initial design was busted. And all you have to do is just point to factors such as that or point to historical areas or historical mach machines such as that to prove that even the idea of having uh, these uh, so-called blueprint designs for ships is still an issue overall. And it's just a very sad state of affairs that you still have individuals today pushing for these ideas with the modicum that they are realistic, even though they never existed. Now, for me personally, uh, when we look at these things, they're a little bit of fun. You know, they're, they're generally quite a, quite a fun thing to throw around the skies and just kind of chill with. Um, but they're never going to be a serious part of War Thunder. And if they ever do become a serious part of War Thunder, they'll obviously be in a little bit more of a realistic sense. So uh, the, the fact of other vehicles such as the... E75, right, or the E50, those are ones which get thrown around a lot. It's kind of amazing how the majority of ones talked about are always wonder weapons from the Japanese or the Germans, because at least from the Allied point of view, generally if they had an idea, well, they just built it, um, <laughs> or at least most nations did. Uh, the, uh, the fact is, when we look at uh, the Japanese or German wonder weapons, uh, a lot of them uh, would not work uh, in the game. They, they wouldn't really fit stuff such as, you know, the uh, guided missiles or the guided, uh, or the guided bombs which weren't built. Or even stuff such as the darts, uh, the plane darts which were designed to cut through bombers' tails uh, with pilot in tow. Uh, that would have definitely been one of those which would have been uh, very dodgy to see in War Thunder, but not impossible, you know, they could definitely have thrown that in. But stuff like the E-50 and the E-75 is much more plausible, but even those have issues when it comes to their designs. Take something like the Low, the, the, or the Lova, the Lion, uh, the Panther 7, uh, which was, uh, you know, which was a design for the uh, for the Germans to be able to put forward their idea of a heavy tank which would compete with something like the Tiger II or even the Mouse. Well, even just a vehicle like that went through several different design iterations. Uh, it was nearly around about 10 in fact uh, that it went through. And because of this fact, uh, how are you supposed to pick which one to go for and which one is seen as the most realistic? and which one is seen as the one which could have worked the best. And this is the general issue with looking at these things and going, yeah, we should have them in the game. It's the fact that, as always, we have uh, too many different factors uh, which play into the ideas that, uh, that would make them very hard to add. But maybe in the future we see some semi-historical, well, I mean, we already have seen some semi-historical vehicles. Uh, but ahistorical ones, maybe that's for another time or another universe. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Lafouche, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.